Hi, my name is Rick Garibay. I'm a principal software engineer in the Customer Trust and Partner Support Organization, otherwise known as CTPS. Today, I want to talk to you about five metrics for navigating your career at Amazon as an STE. At CTPS, we build trust-based systems to balance trust between our customers and our partners. Today, I want to talk about these five metrics, which you can use to quantify your current job satisfaction and possibly even predict your future job satisfaction. Those five metrics are people, domain, learning, impact, and fun, or we can simplify this into the people and the space. So I've been at Amazon for about seven years. Prior to Amazon, I spent time in the financial services industry and then did professional services uh, consulting for large enterprises. My passion has been distributed systems, APIs, and continuous improvement through the application of agile methods. In my first five years at Amazon, I worked on building APIs and tooling for our selling partners within the Seller Partner Services Organization, formerly known as Amazon Marketplace. I was part of the team that launched Simple Document Processing, or SDP, which processes about 9 billion transactions every single day on behalf of our selling partners. I also led the technical vision for modernizing how our selling partners integrate problematically with our Amazon stores by moving to a more restful and resource-oriented approach. And I led the architecture for enabling our selling partners to natively list once and sell globally across our country stores. But after five years working within the Selling Partner Services organization, something happened. I started getting curious and wondering what else might be out there. It's not that I achieved everything that I thought I could achieve, but I started just looking around and thinking about what other opportunities and possibilities may entail. And then, like any good engineer, I started just procrastinating. But seriously, why was I curious? And what options are even out there for a principal engineer not in Seattle? How do I even know how to proceed? The answer came down to two things. First, like any good engineer, I took the time to understand or remember my constraints. I have roots in Phoenix, Arizona. Years ago, my wife and I made the decision that we would stay in Phoenix until my kids finished college. We have an awesome development center in downtown Tempe in the college district, and I definitely encourage you to come visit. You may just want to avoid the summer months. So the second was going back to these five metrics, understanding my constraints, and then really thinking about the five metrics that I mentioned before. These have served me well for most of my career, and I've refined them along the way. And I plugged them into a simple model that I call my current and future job happiness predictor. But first, some good news. If you're an engineer at Amazon, you are polymorphic with just about any team at Amazon that's looking for engineering talent. The opportunities are literally endless. Likewise, maybe you're exploring a role change. This is very common at the SDE2 and SDE3 or L5 and L6 levels. And I encourage you to explore SDM and TPM options as well. Going back to the model, Let's talk about how it works. The first metric is all about people. At any given time in your journey, you might ask yourself, do you enjoy working with these people? Or will you enjoy working with the people in the new opportunity that you're considering? Will you learn and will you grow from them? This is something that's really important because if you think about it, you're going to spend about eight hours a day, every single day, working within this community. That equates to at least 40 hours a week or 2,000 hours a year. That's considerably more than any of us will spend with our family. Your mileage is going to vary, but for me, people is a key factor in my job satisfaction, and that includes my manager and my relationship with my manager. So from people, the next thing to think about is the domain, and this gets us into the space. Is this a business and or technical domain that's interesting to you? Will you wake up most mornings energized and curious? Some of this is subjective, and it has to be because only you know yourself. The third metric is learning. Will you get up in the morning excited about learning and grow and learn in this space? I find that when I feel that I'm no longer learning, I personally start to get antsy and think it might be time to switch things up. But the thing here is don't expect the organization to do the learning for you, right? At Amazon, we have a leadership principle around learn and be curious, which means that we kind of own our own education and our own advancement. And as a principal, part of our job is always to be learning. We even have a tenant for that, educate and advocate. Remember, you own your time and ultimately your career growth and your learning is typically up to you. The fourth metric I want to talk about is impact. Do you feel like you're making a difference for our customers? Do you have the ownership and the autonomy that you need to be successful? While we share a peculiar culture that's pretty global at Amazon, every organization is different. It turns out that there's a tension between domain, 
learning, and impact. What I mean by that is if you feel like you've accomplished quite a bit within a domain and you want to go to a different organization and you want to drive impact, you may want to consider joining an org with a similar business and or technology domain. Likewise, if you want to learn a new business or a new technology, you might make a trade-off on impact to really learn and build a runway before you can have an impact. I can tell you that in my experience, moving from building APIs and tooling for our selling partners to focusing on how we balance trust between our customers and partners has been super eye-opening and it's really paid off for me. Last but certainly not least is asking yourself the question with the fifth metric. Are you having fun? For me, fun is primarily a function of the people in the space. The space can be awesome, but if the people factor isn't there, I'll probably be less satisfied. Sometimes you bet on the people and the space will follow and vice versa. But keep in mind, again, these metrics are fungible because only you really know yourself. So how does the model work? It's super simple. Given these five metrics, you assign each one of those five metrics a score. I use a scale of one to five and then derive the arithmetic mean. That's just a fancy way of saying that you're going to add up the value of each of those five metrics on the numerator and divide by N or five. Let's look at a concrete example. For my last rotation about 25 or so months ago, I ended up having six options to consider. How did I find these options? I certainly didn't have a bunch of, of teams necessarily knocking on my door or getting email in my inbox. I was curious and I started having conversations with other potential partners, hiring managers, even directors and VPs will take your call and respond to your email because there's always an interest in rotation. It's a very healthy part of navigating your career uh, within Amazon. So I ended up with six options based on those conversations in my network. And then I just started collecting data based on discussions with hiring managers, with potential partners, peers, etc. And as I mentioned before, just assign each a value of one to five, with five being really strong and one being not so much. It's kind of like a pros and cons list, but a little more data driven. Pretty simple. And then what happens is as you collect the data, you update each metric across your opportunities. And you might want to think about what weight each of these metrics has for you. For example, as I talked about before, if learning is really important to you, that might outweigh a higher score in something like domain or impact. And then what will happen is soon the ones that you can easily rule out based on your preferences and kind of where you're indexing become clear. Now, keep in mind that you might learn that the grass is greener always staying where you are, and that might be the best option, but the data is going to show you that. And then from there, just think about, again, the weight of each metric and what's important to you. This is really your why. If it's the people, you're going to index highly on that. If it's the domain, you might have trade-offs on impact. But keep in mind, it's not necessarily always the highest score at the bottom, the average, that's going to win. Only you know yourself and what's truly important to you and what trade-offs you're willing to make. And remember, as I mentioned before, this is really kind of coming down to choices, right? It's not a dilemma. Here's a great analogy from a conversation I had with a colleague, Don Schneider. He told me some time ago that a dilemma is a choice where no matter what you choose, you lose. It's kind of like the red pill and the blue pill in the matrix, right? But when choosing between two good options, it isn't a dilemma at all. It's a choice. Think of it like choosing candy. Amazon is like a big, massive candy store. The colors, varieties, and types of candy and choices you have available to you are endless. It's just about choosing which option you prefer. However, there's one thing to keep in mind. Almost always, with few exceptions, when you make a change, you're kind of starting over, at least to some degree. Following the space domain that you're familiar with might lessen that some, but it's at a minimum, you'll learn that you're going to have to reestablish trust with your manager and your team, and you're going to have to learn how your new team and org operates. Again, while our leadership principles and our peculiar culture is going to help, every org is different. So this is when you really need to reach deep to understand your why and embrace that reality. So we've talked about the metrics, we've talked about the score, and we've talked about kind of being prepared for the reality of every change is going to require a little bit of a reset. But once you've done the work and you have your score and you have a quantifiable way to guide you and your decision, just make that choice and don't look back. Remember, this is rarely going to be a one-way door. There's endless opportunities within Amazon. So once you make your choice, do your best not to look back. This can be hard, especially if you're deeply invested in a product or the people that you've been working with, but the data will always be there to remind you of why you made the choice you did. I want to thank you for joining me uh, on this talk on navigating your career at Amazon. 
You can check out opportunities within the Customer Trust and Partner Support career page at the URL on the screen. And I wish you all the best in your career journey. Thank you.